Uh, you ready to go? Sure, let's do this. Go for Tell it. Tell me when. Now? Okay. Hi, my name is Emily, aka The Literary Queen, and I'm here to talk to you about the novel that nearly ruined my honeymoon. It's called The Passage, and it's by Justin Cronin. It's actually part of a trilogy now, and you can read all three. So I started this because I had done a review for this uh, about The Stand, and then everybody was like, well, if you like The Stand, you should read The Passage, which I had somehow never heard of before. Which is ridiculous because as you can see it's a New York Times bestseller and the author got like three million dollars for writing for the trilogy. So, you know, it was in the news. But, um, it's really good. So I got it for the honeymoon because I wanted to read something that would like make the plane go quickly. And then I couldn't, because we were going to Italy, and then I couldn't stop reading it. So every time my husband would be like, let's go look at some really cool old buildings and beautifulness. I'd be like, alright, but five more minutes and then I would be up reading this till 4 a.m. and then have to wake up later. So, as uh, you can tell, you will not want to put this book down. So the basic premise, because it's all, you know, that's what you're gonna wanna know, is that it's like around 2018, the author first wrote this in 2010 or this came out in 2010, so it's a lot closer to home now because it's in two years technically. The government decides they want to they basically start experimenting on 12 death row inmates and infect them with something that, that's like called a that's a virus that's basically like a vampire virus and they think it would be really good for like turning them into like fighting machines but you know what you really want to do is give like 12 horrendous inmates a super virus in a part of a thing called project noah and of course they're going to escape Meanwhile, sidebar, there's a whole thing going on with this girl named Amy who you realize is a big deal because the opening line of the whole book is, before she became the girl from nowhere, the one who walked in, the first and last and only, who lived a thousand years, she was just a little girl in Iowa named Amy, Amy Harper Belafonte. So anyway, this girl is very important because while, the, of course, spoiler alert, the virus gets out, though you spend the first, you know, a hundred and... 200 pages being like, oh, cool, watching the world slowly dissolve when you're like seeing this, this stuff going on in the uh, army base and they're experimenting. And meanwhile, the virals, they're called virals, the vampires that people have been infected, like are starting to mind control people and get into their heads. So there's this like sense of dread and you're like, well, this is all gonna go to hell because you know this is a post-apocalypse novel, you know it's gonna go bad. And meanwhile, Amy gets experimented on as well with like a more refined version of this virus, but it doesn't kill her or turn her into a vampire technically, though she is sensitive to light as are these uh, creatures. So anyway, the vampires get out and when they don't wreak havoc, they turn every, I think, one out of 13 people they attack into other vampires. So it spreads, the world ends. And then we have 93 years later, where there's like a few communes that have managed to survive, what they're called colonies, and they've never seen night, or they've never seen the stars because they live under lights, because the lights are the only thing that keeps these virals out. And then of course Amy shows up and they have to like save themselves. It's incredibly well written and I really can't recommend it enough. There's also this whole like father-daughter relationship thing going on with the men who have rescued Amy or who Amy rescues. And it's very well written. Justin Cronin went to the very famous Iowa Writers Workshop program. So he is an, he was a respected author. And now this is like a very, it is like a very good sense of literary dread in this. Cause you're reading it knowing shit's gonna go down. And my favorite stuff is the stuff that happens as the world falls apart, not how people survive after it. But that's really good here in this as well. All the characters have cool side stories that at times you're like, I don't care about their past. I just want to read more. I just want to see how they survive. And yet, you're really glad he wrote all of that. I would, I, I really can't recommend this enough. I really liked to see, I read the sequel and the, the conclusion as well. I liked those, didn't like them as much as I liked the passage. So, if you want a book to read when you're on vacation that will make you ignore all your loved ones and once in a lifetime sights, read the passage. Thanks.